Want to create a breathtaking view or just recreate a garden or forest scene using iClone 3? It's actually quite easy to do with SketchUp and iClone 3. We can recreate a terrain with hills, mountains, or any varied terrain. Then we can create rocks and other rough surfaces like brick walls or weathered ruins. So first let's create a terrain in SketchUp. To do so, you can manually create one or, as I recommend, use a plugin called Sandbox. To use Sandbox, drag out a surface and choose the estimated size of our terrain. Notice the tick marks. This will show you how many segments will exist in the terrain to help with forming mountains or hilly surfaces. Once the surface is created, let's bind them all together into a group. Using the shaping tool, we can create hills, rolling surfaces, large hills or small hills, or create deep holes in which we can fill with water later in iPhone 3. Use your creativity to come up with some of the great terrain surfaces that you like. Once you're satisfied with your terrain, we can add a texture to it. But notice, once I add a texture, the texture tiling is quite small. So we should increase the size of the texture. So that way, the tiling inside of iClone 3 will fit more precisely to the terrain surface we just made. Let's save this and make sure you save as a SketchUp 6 model. And let's open up our model in 3D Exchange. In 3D Exchange, the first thing to do is to align the model to the center, not to the ground. Because we want the holes to go below the center plane, and we want the hills to go above the center plane. If we align to the ground, we will just end up with the entire model above the center plane. Another important thing to remember to do is, deselect the back faces and remove the geometry from the model. Then making sure that we have the model selected, let's auto smooth it to make the smoother surface for our terrain. We can choose different levels of smooth, but I will just use the typical 45. Alright, let's export it as a prop to iClone 3. Okay, so we have an empty project here in iClone 3, so let's throw our terrain prop into the scene. So click on set, make sure props are selected, then click custom, and let's find our terrain. Then let's have a look at the terrain texture. Let's try to make it look more realistic by changing the diffuse and bump map. One of the easiest and most efficient ways are by loading in a material ball. No, a material ball is not a prop. A material ball is a combination of different texture channels to create realistic outcomes. But wait, let's take a step back for a minute and examine a phenomenon that occurs in Google SketchUp. Notice when I apply a texture to my model, and then we zoom in closer to that model, there are inconsistencies with the texture. They do not align properly. This is because the model is comprised of triangles, and each triangle has the texture applied to it separately, which from a distance will cause a problem of a grainy pattern form. To solve this, either use a texture that is already a grainy texture, such as the one I used before, or align the UV to planar setting, align to the Z axis, and notice the difference. And of course, we need a sky as well, so let's choose a sky from all the templates by clicking on sky. One important thing we should do is let the terrain actually be part of the terrain. If we don't do this, when we add plants, avatars, or any other prop to our scene, they will not snap to our new rolling hill terrain. So let's right click on our terrain model and add it to the terrain. Then let's make sure that the bounding box is off so that the actual model itself is a terrain and that the avatars will walk across it as opposed to walking on the invisible box around our model. Notice now that when I add some plants to my scene, plants will follow the terrain. Next, let's add in some water to complete my small pond. To do so, go to water and choose the template. After we add the water, we can adjust the height so we can create a flood or let the waters of doom recede to a decent pond level. We also don't want our water to be too large, so let's adjust the water size. Notice that the water also has a wave size, strength, and speed. We don't want our pond to be a raging ocean with huge swells, but a nice peaceful reflective pond, so reduce the size. Now since the terrain prop we created in SketchUp has been made into a terrain and has a proper texture and the water for the pond is adjusted to the right height, we can add in some more plants and trees to complete the scene. But what about rocks? Or maybe even just a few ruins? Well, let's go back to SketchUp and let me show you how to make a few boulders to add to our scene. Back in SketchUp, we can create a boulder in a few different ways. The first is using the subdivide tool. First, let's create a box, then select the entire surface of the box, then select the plugin tool of subdivide selected. 
Notice now the surface has been broken into triangles. Now we can use the push-pull tool to manually deform the box to make a rough surface. Once we are pleased with the look of our rock, we can then group it together, then select the Subdivide and Smooth tool. Choose the iterations and select OK. And now we have a decent looking boulder. What if we want our rock to be more round and less jagged, like a sphere or a dome? Well, that can be done too. Let me show you how. First create a box, and then we can use the Crease tool. Crease tool has two functions. When you select green for your line, this means the crease will be harder and retain its sharp edge. When you select red, the edge will become smoother when it's subdivided and smooth. To demonstrate this, the top of my box are all green creases, and the bottom is all red edges. Make sure the box is grouped, and then click on the Subdivide and Smooth plugin. Notice we now have a bullet-shaped rock. Now let's look at another way to make a rock. Begin with a box as usual, and then let's use the Extrude button to add another level to the top. Then using the Push-Pull tool, we can alter the shape of the box. Another handy tool is the Sword of Death, I mean, excuse me, the Knife tool, to cut shapes and add edges to our box. Then again, use the Push-Pull tool to get an odd shape for our box. Then, group our box together, click on the Subdivide and Smooth tool, and look ma, I made a, a rock. Hmm. What about making an archway? Yeah, sure, let's do that. Let's first use our drawing tool to draw a guideline. Remember, doors in iClone 3 are approximately 215 centimeters high and 105 centimeters in width. Now let's draw an archway at the top. Once our arch is drawn, we can delete the lines and faces we don't need. Now here's the fun part. Look at the bottom of the archway and using the free hand draw tool, we can draw some random shape that begins and ends at the end of the line we drew earlier. Notice a face was created, so let's select the face and using the follow me tool, we can drag that face all the way around the archway and voila, an archway! Let's add some texture to it to make it look more like it's made of rocks and let's go back to 3D Exchange. So back in 3D Exchange, we do the same steps that we did for the terrain, except we want to align our models to the ground. Plus, let's add some auto smooth to smooth out some of those faces and let's export our rocks into iClone 3. We also want to do the same with the archway. Align to the ground, auto smooth, and export. Now that we're in iClone 3, let's use those wonderful material balls to add some great looking textures to our rocks to make them look nicer. Once the texture is loaded, we should make sure the texture has the correct alignment. Notice the different effects the texture alignment has on the outcome. Then we can place our boulders anywhere in our scene to add some ambience to it. We can even add them to the next to our pond's edge to soften the water's edge and make it look more like it's coming to life and picturesque. Also, after adding in the texture balls, make sure you fine tune the six texture channels by either adjusting the strength of the channel or by adjusting the color such as brightness and contrast. Notice the difference the specular channel adjustments have on this rock. With just a change with brightness, you can see the effects on the rock to make the rock glisten more, as if wet from the lapping of the water over my rocks in the pond. What about the arch? Let's add it in. Take a look at the texture we added in the SketchUp. It's decent, but I think we can maybe make it look better here in iClone 3. So let's use another material ball and, ooh, looks more realistic. Notice how the light and the bump map works together to make the rock surface on the arch look more natural. So this is my natural world design, and I look forward to seeing yours. Good luck and have fun.